In the recent past, there have been many trends in perfumery, for example, the blue fragrance trend, but one very noticeable trend is also oud. A lot of mainstream designers, a lot of mainstream niche fragrances have oud in their names, and half the time, these fragrances don't even smell like real oud, and much, much, much less frequently do these fragrances actually contain real oud. Today, I'm presenting to you two fragrances that contain real oud. Stick around for this one. Hey guys, welcome back to Real Scent Review. So yeah, the word oud has become, let's face it, a bit of a trend in perfumery in the recent past. There are a lot of fragrances in the designer and some in the niche world that have oud in the name that just don't smell like oud and very, very, very few of them contain real oud. Why? Because oud is rare and expensive. That's the simple explanation. But like I said in the intro, these two fragrances contain real oud. This one here is Oud Maktoum from the Sawalef line of Swiss Arabian, and this one here is Dan Oud Al Shams from Ajmal. Exquisite fragrances that do contain real oud, and I'm gonna get right into this one. Because we all know what oud is, right? Right. Wait, you don't know what real oud is? Okay, well let me explain. There's a species of tree that grows in India and Southeast Asia called Achillaria. And this tree, when the wood becomes infected, produces a type of resin as a defense mechanism. It produces this resin to protect itself from the infection. So what happens is, the infected part of the tree is cut out. They actually cut out the wood from the tree that contains this resin. They distill it and they extract pure oud oil. That's, in a nutshell, what oud is. There are many different types of oud. There's Indian oud, you know, but within India itself, there are actually several different types of oud. Cambodia oud, oud from Cambodia, you know, as well, there are different types of oud that come out of the country of Cambodia. Oh, there's Vietnamese oud, there's even Chinese oud, and there's a couple of other types as well. Point is, each type of oud is kind of known for its unique scent profile. To put it simply, to put it very simply, Indian oud, which is the kind of oud that this fragrance contains, is known for being very animalic, funky, sometimes fecal, sometimes barnyardy. It smells like a horse stable. Indian oud tends to be very animalic and uh, for Western noses tends to be the most off-putting. Gonna generalize here a little bit. Now some types of Cambodia oud, some types of Vietnamese oud, we're going all the way over to Southeast Asia now. Those ouds just tend to smell more woody. They can have some smoky characteristics. They can definitely have some medicinal characteristics. So you know, a little bit camphoric, astringent, sour wood. Sometimes with a little bit of sweetness, there can be sometimes some, some sweet facets to those ouds as well. Again, I'm generalizing a lot here. But basically, the Southeast Asian varieties of oud tend to have this really sour, medicinal, woody, sometimes smoky accord going on. And the Indian oud tends to be very barnyardy, fecal, sometimes leathery, and also sometimes with a little bit of sweetness. In a nutshell, that's kind of how oud works. So this one here contains some Cambodia oud, also contains a very, very, very tiny bit of Indian oud to my nose. And of these two fragrances, this is going to be the more appealing one or less off-putting because this one here is is a bomb it's very strong and now it's time to get into what these fragrances actually smell like okay gonna start with this one here oud maktoum from the sawalef line of swiss arabian and swiss arabian in the western world might be more known for their clones as opposed to their original releases this is an original release and it is a damn good one if i do say so myself so very briefly going to go over the presentation. It comes in this box here, it's rubberized, it opens like this. And inside of the box there's this pouch which has, looks like a little string to pull it shut. And it has this copper, this little copper thingy on the side that hangs off. Interesting stuff, but I'm not here to go over the presentation. I'm here to go over what the scent actually smells like. So there's three notes in this apparently. There's Indian Oud, there's Cambodia Oud, and there's just Oud. So yeah, right off the initial spray, I do get a little bit of what smells to me like Indian oud. So there's a sweetness, there's kind of like a boozy, ambery sweetness. It's not a cloying sweetness. Ambery, slightly boozy sweetness. Maybe a little bit of dried fruit, like maybe dried raisins, dried cranberries, something along those lines. And that's the opening. And this dries down with Cambodia oud, which 
it definitely has a sour type of medicinal smell to it, but it's also very, very just woody. It smells like cedar, it smells like fresh cedar or maybe cut up cedar. Very woody. There's a slight camphoric freshness to it. Dries down with a little bit of smoke as well, kind of like an incense -y type of smoke. And that's what we get here. This smells, this absolutely smells like a mix of a little bit of Indian oud with a decent amount of Cambodia oud. Fantastic fragrance here. And actually in the dry down, I'm reminded a lot of Oud Imperial Eau de Parfum by Paris Monte Carlo. This one, if you haven't seen my review, basically starts off with that heavy medicinal Oud, dries down to some earthy, fresh, woody cedar, and there's some incense smoke in this as well. The dry down's very, very similar. So, Oud Maktum, Swiss Arabian, the company itself actually says that they use real Oud in this fragrance. But it's also definitely diluted, obviously, because it's not just pure Oud oil. There's denatured alcohol, there's, there's water in the fragrance. But as you can see here on the box, the other ingredients are the Parfum, which is the perfume oil used. And you can see these chemical fixatives, these aroma chemicals as well. So those laboratory synthesized chemicals are definitely there to add, I think, a slight bit of woodiness, a slight bit of freshness in the bottom. But there absolutely is no mistake that this does contain real oud, but the oud doesn't make up 100% of the composition. It's, it's definitely diluted. It's, it's a little bit kind of subdued, which the name oud maktum means hidden oud, as far as I know. My Arabic isn't the greatest, but uh, please correct me, but I'm pretty sure oud maktum means concealed or hidden or subdued oud. So, I mean, in the grand scheme of real oud, this might not be the strongest, but this is just fantastic. Now, regarding the performance, I said, you know, compared to a lot of real oud oils out there, compared to a lot of real oud colognes, this might not be the strongest, but that does not mean that it's weak. It's not. The projection on this is between an elbow's length and an arm's length for the first hour and a half. The more you move around, you're going to catch whiffs of this. The sillage, also pretty decent. Now the longevity is where this stuff shines. Nine, 10 hour fragrance, easy. Great performance, don't worry about that. Extremely good quality fragrance here, and you're gonna be paying for that quality. For my friends in North America, this is gonna run you 120 US dollars for 80 milliliters on Maison Dorian's website. I'm gonna leave the link down below. And for my people in the European Union, Deluxe.es has this for 120 euros for the same volume. And in my opinion, it's worth every single penny. It's a phenomenal fragrance. Okay, so now let's get on to the stronger of the two. This one here is Dan Oud Al-Shams by the House of Ajmal. Just briefly going over the box here on this side, you can see Arabic writing Dan Oud Al-Shams. And on the front, it's English Dan Oud Al-Shams. Bottom here, I'm going to show you. Concentrate on this bottom part because it's going to be important later, all right? So... As far as I know, Dan Oud Al Shams means something like wood of the sun, Oud of the sun. I know Al Shamsu in Arabic is the sun, literally. So I think it's fitting that this bottle kind of looks like a sun. You can see the rays coming out of the middle here. Very, very nice bottle, heavy bottle here. It's only 30 milliliters, but it's, it's heavy. You can tell it's a great quality bottle. We have the metallic edges on the outside of the bottle itself here. The front and the back are made of glass. And if you can see the rays of sun here are actually frosted glass. Feels very smooth if you touch it. Very, very, very nice bottle here. The only problem is the cap, very cheap, flimsy, plastic. And you can see it kind of just clicks into place like this. But I just want to show you right around the rim of the cap here on the bottom, you can see this Arabic writing. I'm not sure what it says, but I, I really like this part of the cap. The rim looks just exquisite to me, metal, and in silver writing, you can see that there's something written in Arabic. Anyway, I really like this bottle. And again, I have it on good authority. I asked around, did some research. This is absolutely real oud. And from what I know, actually in the Middle East, this is a very, very common perfume. A lot of people wear this as like a daily scent. So one could think of it as maybe the Dior Sauvage of oud fragrances in the Middle East. And also, if we look at the ingredients list, all we're gonna see is parfum slash fragrance, water and alcohol. So it's the oud essential oil diluted with alcohol and water, and there's no laboratory chemicals, no fixatives in this. And, uh, Okay, yeah, so it's definitely real oud in here. And that's exactly what it smells like. So, get a spray out of this one. Very animalic. If you're not used to ouds, do not pick this one up. This is very strong. Right off the bat, extremely animalic. 
It smells like a very, very dirty leather. There's definitely some, I don't know, something that smells like along the lines of tobacco, like chewing tobacco, very wet, very moist tobacco here, very strong. Again, there's some dried fruits here, very, very, very strong aroma of raisins and some dried cranberries, perhaps. And of course, you get that fecal barnyardy thing going on as well. This is a very potent fragrance here. And again, oud is the only note, specifically Indian oud in this. I'm not sure which part of the country it comes from, but it's Indian oud and it smells like Indian oud. Very animalic, very barnyardy. So that's what you get at first. It's kind of like the dried fruits, animalic leather, chewing tobacco, very damp, very dark tobacco. And when this dries down, we're left with sort of like an animalic leather with some smoke. So very, very potent fragrance here. And in the dry down, it reminds me of, I went horseback riding in the mountains of Oaxaca, Mexico. And you know, if you've ever been on a horse before, you realize they have a very particular odor, especially the horse mixed with the leather saddle and off in the distance they were burning leaves. So every now and then I would get wafts of smoke, gentle wafts of smoke coming towards me. That's exactly what the dry down of this fragrance smells like. So if you have experience in horseback riding, perhaps you might not find this super off-putting, but for the average person, this is very intense. The average Western person is going to find this off-putting. So just keep that in mind, but absolutely it's, it's real oud. So this one here, 30 milliliter bottle, can be had on fragrance buy for 95 US dollars. And here in the European Union, Natino has this for 60 euros for 30 milliliters. Now you might be asking yourself, how is it possible that Ajmal can charge so little for a real oud fragrance? First and foremost, Ajmal owns a lot of Aquilaria plantations all over Southern Asia. So they have access to the trees from which oud is derived. And also keep in mind it's a 30 milliliter bottle, so it's not really that much volume that we're getting here. And honestly, you don't need that much. This is kind of like a one spray cologne. One spray, you know, very, very potent, not versatile, needless to say, not versatile at all. But you know, it's very, it's a very spiritual fragrance. It has a sort of calming effect when you smell this. This would be good for, you know, meditation purposes. Like I said, neither of these fragrances is for beginners. I'm sure if you're watching this video, it's because you have a real interest in oud fragrances. Okay, maybe this one would be suitable for a lot of intermediates and definitely advanced collectors. But this one here, advanced collectors only. This is a very potent, very uh, animalic, dirty fragrance here. And that's exactly what Indian oud is known for, the many varieties of Indian oud. So, you know, these two fragrances here, absolutely not versatile, but this one here is, is definitely less in intense, it's less off-putting. By the way, the performance on this one is extreme. Three hours projection past an arm's length, 11, 12 hours longevity on the skin. This is just a beast performer and it smells very beastly as well. But yeah, this one here, it's a little bit more agreeable. This is one of my absolute favorite wood-based scents. It is so good. Again, not for beginners, but you don't get any of that fecal barnyardy thing going on in this one. This is, like I said, medicinal, woody, smoky. Opens up with some dried fruits and there's a boozy, ambery sweetness as well. Honestly, I think this is a masterpiece fragrance. This is as well, don't get me wrong. I just prefer this one, but hey, I'm not discounting the quality or the smell of this one at all. They're both absolutely fantastic fragrances. And if you're a real Oud fan, you can't go wrong with either one of these. Check them out. In the Western world here, these are very, very under the radar, but I did my research for you guys and I've just presented them to you. So make of that what you will. Now that you are armed with the information, you can make a more informed decision. These ones, by the way, are great for layering. Like I said, you know, there's basically one note that these fragrances are based around and that is oud. Although this one, you know, has a mix of Cambodian, Indian oud, and there's definitely some aroma chemicals in this one as well. But like at the end of the day, they're not linear, but there's not like a whole, whole, whole lot going on. You're definitely just gonna get that oud. It's all about that oud, which makes these great for layering. Feel free, you know, to get creative, mix these around because that note of oud, especially this one has like that smokiness. It could really amp up some of those sweet gourmand fragrances for winter. And this one here, I mean, you have to be a little bit more careful with this one, I would think. But I think this one paired with, you know, lighter, woody, somewhat fresh fragrances, would be a really, really good mixture. This would add a lot of beef, a lot of backbone to the fresh woody fragrance. And uh, with that very animalic smell, could be a winning combination if you play your cards correctly. So anyway, guys, these are two real oud fragrances that I've researched, that I've presented to you guys. Hope you've enjoyed the review. Until next time, keep it real.